Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. Random is a key word in so many games. You might want random enemies, you might want random dialogue, random chances, or in a lot of occasions, random quests. MMOs such as World of Warcraft are big for this kind of thing. They're normally used for filler quests or for little side quests to just give the player something to do during their travels. Single player games like Spider-Man or Horizon use it when they'll just randomly spawn an event and you have to go and sort it. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna look at some random aspects you can add to your quests. We're going to randomize the quantity of the items you need to pick up, and you could easily apply this to random enemies you need to take out. We'll randomize some locations. We'll even make it so it randomly assigns some quests at the same time. The first thing we're going to look at is how to randomise picking up items. So maybe you want to randomise the quantity. So instead of just hard coding 5 or 3 or something, you can say randomise between two numbers. And that's really easy to do. So I'm just going to set myself a basic point up here. So I'm going to take this character here. I'll just duplicate him across to here. Turn him around. Uh, I'll rename him to NPC, I don't know, we'll call it Lucy. And I'll change their name. And because it's narrative based, I'm also going to change their tag so narrative knows how to find them, like so. And then let's just change the mesh because he doesn't look like a Lucy at the moment. So we'll hip hop female. Yeah, that works. Get rid of the glasses and I'll just change the hair. Yeah, there's Lucy. There we go. That'll do. So first thing I'm going to do is create a dialogue for it. And that's how we can assign the quest to our player. So I'm just going to go narrative dialogue inside my folder. I'll just right click narrative dialogue and I'll call it DB Lucy there we go while I'm here I'll just click Lucy and assign it to her just so she picks it up and then we can get started with the dialogue so the first thing I'm going to do is just wipe out her dialogue because we always leave the first one empty because it gives us a lot more flexibility for the conditions and I'm going to drag down and on this one I'll just say from the player have you got any jobs for me so the player can come and say have you got any jobs or he can just come in and say goodbye and by will end the dialogue, so that's fine. Have you got any jobs for me? So if she has, then I need her to say, yes, here's your job. So yes, I have one thing. And then this is where I'll apply my conditions later. So in here, I'll just say, there we go. I need a variety of tires. The more, the better. Can you go get me some, please? And this is where we'll begin the dialogue. So I'm just going to come in. I'll add an event of begin quest. And that's where we'll begin it. But we actually need the quest now. So I'm going to jump into my quest folder. I'll just create a new quest called QB Lucy's Tires. There we go. And then just while I'm here, I'll tell her to give us this quest here, like so. Compile and save. So inside here, we actually just need to start the quest to randomly go and get the tires. So I'm actually going to come and create a new narrative task in here. And I'll call it NT Random Pickup Items. And I'm going to keep it separate to my normal pickup items just so they're not going to cross that much over. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to override the begin task here. And then I'm just going to instantly come off. And this is where we're going to now set the quantity required for this task. So I'm going to do set required quantity, which is now an exposed parameter you can edit. So inside here, I want to choose a random integer. So I'll do random int in range, and I'll just promote both of these to a variable. And then we'll get it to randomize between these. So if I just say the min is one, because you can't really complete it if you don't need to pick any up. And then the default for max, let's say 10. There we go. So that'll randomly set the quantity of this task between one and 10. And since we've added these as variables, we can edit this in the quest. So it changes every time. From here, I'm just going to come off and do get all actors of class with tag. So all of my pickups all inherit from a BPA pickup class here, which is a super, super simple, simple class is a box trigger with nothing in it. And then on the event graph, it checks for the first person character. It calls the delegate picked up, plays any dialogue if it needs to and destroys it. That's it. The point of that BPA pickup is you make a child of it, such as this turbocharger. And then you add anything you want inside box. So I've added a model. And then in the event graph, I don't do anything because it all takes care of itself. But I can if I need to. And that's what I pick up. So everything's going to be a BPA pickup. What item I want to pick up, we can also randomize if we really want to. So I'm just going to drag off from here and do random array item like so. 
and then I will promote this to a variable and say items to randomize so it'll randomize which items I need to actually pick up from this out actors I'm just going to come and do a for each loop to loop over them all and then all I'm going to do is assign an event so I'll assign picked up there which is that which is the de delegate I showed you a moment ago and then when this is picked up all I'm going to do is add progress like so I'm going to overwrite the event on task completed and then I just need to get all of these other items again and then get rid of them because we don't need them anymore I'm going to go over all these items and I'm going to unbind our event from them because we don't actually need them to have the event anymore. So what I'm actually going to do is just pull this back a little and I'm going to promote this to a variable saying item tag chosen. And I'm going to make this private so we don't see it in narrative. Because if we randomize the item once, we need to remember which item we randomized so we can get it back again. There we are. And now what I can do is I can copy this get all actors with tag in the for each loop and I can paste it down here. And then I can put my item chosen in here. Now you might be asking why don't I just store this out actors as a variable because you don't know how long the player is going to have this quest active. They could very well start this quest where it's bound to all the actors, store them in memory and then they never access it again for 60 hours. That's 60 hours worth of memory this is taking up. Equally, they could do it within 30 seconds. It goes both ways. However, one small hit when it first loads it, and then one small hit when it gets rid of it, is better, in my opinion, than one constant hit of having to store it in memory. That's why I'm optimizing it this way. If you disagree, let me know below why. We can have a good conversation about this stuff. So from here, all I'm going to do off this... Uh, array element here is unbind event I only want unbind single event there I don't want the all events because something else might be bound to it and we don't want to interfere with it and all I'm going to do is drag it back up to here like so there we go and I can compile and save and that's pretty much the very basic item script now there is one caveat to this in another project I'm working on at the moment I've stopped doing it this way the only reason I'm doing it this way now is because I'm presuming all the items exist in the world. And in a moment, we're going to go and drop some items in. However, if there is any possibility that you very well might spawn items in during the quest, this way won't work. Because narrative will find all the items, bind the event to it, then you spawn your items, narrative won't know about them anymore. So what I've done in my future projects is I've implemented my own tutorials inventory system to the game, even though I don't need an inventory. It's a it's a hidden inventory, if you wish. Or you can use a narrative inventory system. And I've instead of looping over items and binding to them, I've bound to the inventory and said, tell me when you get this item instead. Because that way, if you spawn an item or if you don't spawn an item, you'll always be told. But yeah, so now we can actually use this task. So if I come back to my quest here, quest loses tires and I can do random and after a small unreal crash we can come in and we can actually add the random pickup items here so you can see my properties up here so I get to choose a min and max so we'll say between one and I'll do eight items she wants and then the items to randomize well we know it's tires in this case so I'm just going to put racing tires and now that we've done this, I can come into the task and add a description so Lucy wants some tires and that's all I'm going to do for this simple one here. So I can compile and save. And then I kind of need some tires now. So if I come to my blueprint items, I have some tires here. And again, you've saw the pickup and you've saw the tires. So we know what that's all about. And I can just grab these. I can just duplicate them down a little bit. So we're going to need at least eight. Because if you get less than eight, then you can never finish the quest. So I'm going to add 10 just in case. And now, if I, and now if we try, we can actually come up to Lucy and we can start the question. And she'll say, Lucy wants some tyres, 0 out of 3. Okay, so let's go and find Lucy some tyres. So we've got them all here. So I can go 1, 2, 3. There we are. And then that's it, task done. But if I restart it now, so it picked 3 this time. But if I restart it and talk to her this time, she'll say she wants 7 tyres this time. See, it's completely random, and you can do anything you want with this. MMOs often use like animals for you to go and farm with, so go and kill five balls or something like that. And it's really, really easy to do. And let's just check the randomization of the items while we're here. So uh, I'll just drag off of here just for now, 
I'll put random item. You could easily put a dialogue in here, take the tires back to Lucy. Then she goes, oh, thank you. I also need some other car parts if you find any, you know, something like that. So this time we'll say five. But the item she wants is either a turbocharger, which is something I've got, or a high performance spark plug, like so. And then this time, Lucy wants more car parts. So now that we've had the second bits here, we actually need to spawn these items in case they come in. So I'll drop a couple of turbochargers in and a couple of high performance spark plugs. Uh, grab both of these and I can't remember, how, I think I said five. So I'll just randomize, randomize these up here like so, there we go. So now if I start it and run up to Lucy, you'll see she'll give me the first task, which will be get some tires. So I can run down here and I'll just get two tires now. So it's an easy job, pop, pop. And then it'll say, oh, she wants some more car parts. But you'll notice we don't actually know what car parts she wants. Is it a spark plug? Okay, it is a spark plug. But if I create, collect a turbo charger, it does nothing. So we know she wants a spark plug, but it didn't tell us. So what we can do is we can come into this NT random pickup items and we can come and override the get task description function. And with this, we can basically use it and append the item tag name on the end of it like we need to. So from this task description here, if I just drag off and do format, I can plug this result into the return node and I can add a pin here. I can disconnect the format and then inside here, I can put, an, put a curly brace and type text and I can close the curly brace, I can press space, and I can do another one for item. And you'll see it's given me two variables. So I can now connect the return value into text and the item tag chosen into the item like so. And now if I come back to my quest here and click on this one, I'm gonna remove the description override and instead I'm gonna paste it inside description here and I'm gonna press enter. So now if I compile and save and run the game, you'll see after I start the quest, it'll ask for some tires so it can collect more tires again. But you'll see now it's telling me to specifically get a, a turbocharger. There's some other funky bits on the beginning of it, but we can sort that in a moment. So I at least now know if I collect spot plug, nothing happens. I need to collect all five of those, which is perfect. So let's just go and fix that little issue. So the get task description is probably the issue so instead all i'm going to do for mine is just return the item chosen like that i don't need it to do anything special so now we have a quest which gives us random quantities such as the three tires we have a task that gives us a random item with random quantities so i can collect the turbochargers up nothing happens i collect the spark plugs it goes up and it completes just like that how cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? So there's plenty of ways you can randomize your quest and your task. The last one we're going to look at is randomizing the quest that you actually get from them. So it might be a random quest. It might be a predefined. It'll do something random. So to do this, I'm going to open up her dialogue. And inside here, I'm going to come into my dialogue graph here. So where have you got any jobs from me? And she says, yes, I've got one thing. So the way I'm going to go around this is I'm going to basically append each of these dialogue options because I wanted to say something different every time. So at the first, she'll say, I need some tires. Next, she'll say she wants to sabotage somebody or something else. So all I'm going to do is really basically use narrative's default functionality of conditions. So on this one here with Lucy's tires, I'm going to come in and add a condition and I'm going to say, is the quest started or finished? And I'm going to open this up and I'm going to tick the not option. So I'm saying as long as this quest isn't started or finished yet, then I'm going to set the quest to my Lucy's tires. So in theory, she will only ever come to this node and not be able to proceed once she's already had the dialogue. So we've got this first one. So I'll drag off this second one and I'll add another dialogue line for Lucy. And I'll just say, please can you sabotage some cars? And I'm just going to give the player the quest for the Nakamura twins. And I'll set it to the end. So there we go. And then again, I'm going to come and copy this condition. So shift right click. And I'm going to shift left click on the conditions. And I'm just going to change it to raceway rivalry. And there we go. So now we have those two there. So now if we start it, we should be able to talk to her once and have this one open up. And then we should be able to talk to her again and have this one open up. And the last thing I need to do is just complete this quest off. So I just come here and just do succeed the quest. So now if I come and speak to her, she'll give us the first quest like so. If I can come, come and collect the tires, there we go. And now it wants us to get the spark plugs so I can complete the spark plugs. Then the quest succeeds just like that. So now if we come back and talk to her again, she's going to give us another random quest. You got any jobs for me? Yes, I have one thing. Please can you sabotage some cars? And the next quest starts. So if I come and sabotage this car over here, for example, there we go. And then if I speak to the Nakamura twins and say, yes, I sabotaged somebody's car, even though it's not correct. There we go. That one is done. We've now made it so it changes quests 
just like that we can keep coming up to it just like a bulletin board if you didn't want to go down this path here say you had a bulletin board where it doesn't really speak to you you could of course just add a variable of your quests and then just set the data type to be your type of narratives quest and set it to a class reference and then just set it to an array then all you need to do when you reach a certain point is randomly pick one from there and that's it ladies and gentlemen that is how to do random quests using narrative without very much modification at all so we have a quest with random items a quest with random quantities random assignment of the quest and you can take it so much further you could add locations to it and spawn the items only in those locations so say if you've got a boss fight like in far cry 4 you have certain boss fights but they're not very randomized you could make it randomized you could say oh the boss is inside this tire shed it's on that boat it's on top of these logs kind of thing and all you do is just randomize between the locations spawn the enemy and then it will all fall in line and that's it ladies and gentlemen so i hope this helped if you have any other suggestions for tutorials you would like to see please let me know below the holidays are fast approaching so i hope everybody has a lovely time and happy holidays my name is decryption and i will see you next time